it. Skimming through this to look at, like, all my notes and highlights throughout the book, it is very clear that I'm very biased for Team Cell. Like, I have issues with Nick, and I recognize there's issues with Cell. Does he 100% almost get Brie killed on purpose? Yes. Honestly, but, if someone tried to freak me out, I feel like that would be a little bit romantic. Like you, Listen, you in my defense, you want to take me Cell out. has a shirtless I think that's like you actually want to take me out instead of taking me out. <laughs> Listen, he does recognize that it was wrong afterwards, and he's like, oh. Sorry, and then, and then, also, they have, listen, I'm just saying, emotionally, they make more sense. They understand each other on an emotional level, and then, also, he has a shirtless scene, and I forgot about that. I don't know how I forgot about it. I remembered the ball scene, because how do I know, or gala, how can I forget the gala? Oh my god, the gala. The gala. Okay. Um, oh my god, you can't forget about the gala, the most important scene, where they're slow dancing, and Cell is, like, trying to whisper important information in her ear while they're slow dancing, and so he's basically macking on her neck in order to get the information to her, and she's just oh like, God. you smell nice. <laughs> you think that isn't in my brain constantly? No. No. Um, hello, welcome to Official Flower Podcast. If I keep all that in, you can tell this is my favorite book of all time. In my defense, this episode comes out the day before my birthday. This is my birthday present to myself. <laughs> Making Fish read the sequel and getting to talk about this book for approximately an hour. And you getting a vlog of it if you're lucky. Who knows what will happen. I did vlog, but that doesn't mean you're going to ever see it. I might just uh, email it to you one day and you'll be like, oh my god. Oh my god. Listen, is the Legendborn vlog still up? Yeah. Okay. That's all I, I care about. That's issues. my comfort video. I have issues. Yeah, Everyone, I know Go to Fish's channel and watch the Legendborn vlog. Yeah. Links are below. This is me promoting things. Promoting things, links. Links are below. That's the thing. No matter where you're watching it. I'm like, oh my god, I miss you too. And then I'll... That's yeah, what happens. I comment like every time. The watch time of that is probably so high. So I've watched it like seven times. In one year. It's a scene. A, a scene? A scene. Um, yes, this is the Wait, Legendborn vlog. We're so happy. I'm so happy. Um, I was gonna reread this. I didn't need to. I opened up the book and I went, oh, I remember everything. And just started, the first pages of notes are 100% just me remembering things. And then, oh. the, sorry. <laughs> everything else is me skimming my highlights throughout the book mixed with everything I remember. That's how well I know this book. Um, it's an issue. Yeah, it really is, but take a while and guess what maybe you made that noise. Um, is it sleep token? Yes, but be more specific. Um, a man is choking another man. No. Not this time. <laughs> Thank you for the not this time. Well, thank you. I think we act a little fruity up there. Okay. Oh, That's why the are you part, sending right? it to me? I'll look at it later. Um, yes, I have my physical copy in my hands. I'm going to be holding this thing with a grip vice this whole time. Because there are two optional three times where I will be reading it from the book directly. Um, there are important reasons on why the two actual ones. The optional one is the shirtless scene. I could reiterate it to you, or I could just read it to you. It's up to the fish. Um, anyways, Legend Board, my favorite book. Uh, me, I'm Flower, a.k.a. Rose. Intro. Stuff. Hello. <laughs> this intro is so wild. Um, this is Official Flower Podcast. My name, or I'm Flower, my name's Rose. And my fun fact is that, um, apparently we revamp something with this podcast every six months-ish. Because last time, it was the fish with the graphics. And this time, it's me with the note-taking system. Because um, oh, I've had to revamp the editing, the way I edit things. It's not noticeable to anyone but me, but the way that I have to edit is changed because the other program I was using changed completely, and I hate it. Uh, so, because of that, uh, I, in the process of changing how I edit, realized, oh shit, 
I take too many notes. You do not need all this information. Like, it's obscene. You just figured this out. Listen, I've known it this whole time, but now it's gotten to the point where, with the fact that I, my, uh, pain in my arms with my, I think it was tendonitis, I don't know, was so bad. It was viscerally so bad, where last week's episode was supposed to be in the middle of May, but it was already recorded, shortish, and so I could totally edit it in, like, an hour without, like, if I just take off my wrist brace, edit it in an hour, and then not have to worry about it, right, put it back on, because, and hear me out, it was really bad, it was really, really fucking bad, so with the fact of, like, me being annoyed with how much time it takes to edit, with the fact of all the pain, made me realize, I talk too fucking much, <laughs> I've been telling you this for over a year. I know. I know. So, um, shorter but episodes. I love you, so. Coming to you from now on. Uh, this, my notes. I took notes. Uh, the fetch already knows how long the notes are, so they don't get to guess. It's four pages. I forgot how long they are. Sorry. <laughs> it's exactly four pages of notes. Oh, wow, wow. That's, that's so short for <laughs> us. Wow. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's wild. And this is, like, a book that's just under 500 pages. Remember that time I took 270-something highlights of a 170-page book? Because there's something I wrong. Do... I haven't even done my intro yet. I know. Do your intro. Uh, my name is Fish, aka Stingray. Um, I want to share that, but I'm not going to share that. Uh, sleep token performed sleep, uh, missing limb. And I saw a video of it, and I almost threw up. Because I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but y'all don't understand missing limbs like I do. Like, I'm so sorry, but it's true. Okay. Okay. I have to, I, another, another, another coin in the sleep token jar is a metaphorical, metaphor, meta, metaphorical sleep token jar. Mm. Um, another you. A YouTuber I watch uh, is a sleep token fan. Dude, whenever she brings up sleep token, I'm like, what the fuck? How did H get here? Um, <laughs> but she went to, like, a concert and she was talking about it. And she's like, listen, I get it. I know it sounds like a cult. I mean. But <laughs> it's a good time. And I'm just like, no, oh, man. The whole thing is based on vessel, the vessel where she's seeing a deity called sleep. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to talk about Legend Lore now. Um, content okay. warnings. We have the good old racism. She's bad. <laughs> I don't know why I make, say that the way that I did. Um, just assume... I'm not going to bring up every instance of racism, because, and hear me out, it's a lot. Um, there's, like, one point when she's going to this event for the Secret Society of Rich White People, where one of the old rich white ladies uh, assumes she's one of the servants... And talks down to her and tells her to do this stuff. And, and takes just uh, one of the other characters to come up and be like, no, um, I invited her here as a guest for her to be like, oh. And then just move on. Um, right, there's, uh... I need to fix the Instagram. I should have not have opened it. Oh my god. Um, they, they, opened the, they opened the fucking show with the, the night does not belong to God. I have to go somewhere. Gonna, I have to I'm gonna go I'm going to turn off your phone, but that's kind of an issue, because... Um, that's how we're talking, but... You have to keep the working one away from me, that's what I'm telling you. Um, so, uh... I'm I'm gonna put parental controls on your phone so that you can't open sleep token, any sleep token. Oh my god. While we're recording? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I know, right? Um, so, uh, other racism. Um, there's, like, dude, it's, like, most of it is not blatant racism. It's a lot of white people in power... Um, just being, like, a girl like you, um, or, well, obviously you were picked for this, not because of your brains or you're smart, but because you're black. Um, that's most of the racism. But a, a lot of the times, if she's talking to a white, usually man, in power, there's some racist undertones. Um, we also got grade 8, death of parrot and grief. I feel like I should mention the first time I read this was the February, I think it was after my dad died. So, like, less than two months after my dad died. <laughs> um, you, you, no, got, you got not. death of parent 
heavy grief right after my dad dies and Arthurian shit, which has been my shit since I was, like, 12 years old. Obviously, I was gonna be obsessed from day one, honestly. Uh, we also got some slavery, car accident, and rape, because we can't have a good time out. <laughs> um, so you may be wondering what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, uh, Bree is the main character. She is 16. Uh, three months before the <laughs> I book's... I forget she's 16. Like, what I know, the right? fuck? Um, three months before the book like, starts, her Here mom, we are. I don't think she's written, like, a 16-year-old. I feel like she's written at least, like, 18. Mm. You know, there could be this whole thing said where the way she acts and does things is not, like, a 16-year-old. But, like, one, she's a black woman herself, and two, uh, she's Bravo. just going through a traumatic experience, uh, so she had to grow up faster than your typical person, so that's why... You see what I'm going with that. Um, anyways, she's 16. Uh, three months ago, right before, it's like in the prologue, uh, three months before the book starts, her mother died in a car crash. I think it was a hit and run type thing. Um, right. And now she's at a party in the woods with her best friend, Alice. I have thoughts and opinions about Alice. Um, I'm going to put it here. It's, I don't think it's blatantly ever straight up said what Alice, what Alice's race is. But her last name is Chen. So, I'm gonna go with Asian. Um, so, they both go to uh, a UNC program, which is University of North Carolina. Um, one thing I will state, the setting of this book feels very, very, very real, and I learned that Tracy Dion, the author, went to UNC. That's why it feels real, because she actually literally has been there. <laughs> she spent four years, at least, of her life there. Like, it makes sense. Um, but basically, it's... it's it's a program where smart high schoolers um, get to go to college, basically, for college credits, right? Um, live on the dorms, all the stuff. Uh, the last conversation she had with her mother was a fight because uh, her mother went to college in UNC, and that's one of the reasons why Brie wanted to go there for this program. And her mother's like, no, you're not going. And Brie's like, this is a good thing for my future. And so um, after her mom died and she got accepted, uh, her dad was like, okay, but I, like, you need to grieve and all this stuff. Good times. Um, you know, fun times. Uh, so there's, like, a random, uh, like, attack at this party. There's, like, people fighting, blah, blah, blah. Um, and at this fighting, Bree sees some weird magic things happen. Whoops, oh, well. Daisy. Oh, um, I'm sorry if you can hear a lawn being mowed in the background. Because every single time there's lawn mowing to my left, it goes on. Like, all day. Mm. And hear me out. The next door neighbor has a smaller yard than we do. So what the fuck is happening over there? Uh-huh, uh-huh. My favorite is when they mow the lawn every day. And it's like, bitch, there's no way it's grown enough for you to mow it again. What the fuck are you doing? Like, at least once a week. I'm like, what are you on about? I know, right? Um, so, uh, obviously because there's a bunch of drunk teenagers and or slash college students, um, and people running, and blah, 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 um, the cops show up, uh, there is a whole thing, so, she sees magic things happening, uh, torturing of a demon, uh, we get the introduction of Cell, who sees her seeing this, and so he, uh, basically mesmers her, takes away her memories of it, right, tells her to go home, um, but she trips in the woods and, like, scrapes up her arm, I think it is, on a tree, and the pain makes her remember that, and she's like, what the fuck, um, she runs into Alice, and that's when the cops show up, and so the cops, uh, pick her up and take them back to campus. Um, it's, this is, like, the whole instance where he's all like, oh, you can't be smart girls. Like, you have to be going here just because you're people of color. That's why you got in. Um, right? Um, so, uh... Oh, hear me out. What if the, the Mesmer thing, like, if, like, the fact that being, uh, her getting hurt and, like, feeling pain stops the Mesmer, does that apply beyond her that's the question i have i don't think so i feel like it would be i would think so because like what if like you like just a normal person gets mesmered and then uh you trip and fall and scrape your knee like right after you get mesmered or something and then the mesmer gets erased no like they would have known about this beforehand this is, like, a completely new thing that she can do this. I I 100% believe this is just a breathing. <laughs> um, 
So, um, uh, and- on the process of taking them back to campus, right, uh, he gets stopped by Cell and Tor, who is another person who's helping Cell out, right? Um, so, uh, basically, Cell orders the cop, which basically makes Brie go, ah, oh, shit, this weird magic shit that totally isn't magic, like, some weird shit's going on, um, <laughs> right? Uh, totally this, like, 20-year-old is controlling the cops, which means the guy who literally erased my memory is controlling the cops. That's, like, dangerous. Like, I should not go near that, right? Like, that's so suspicious. That's so weird. Yep. Um, so the cop says, don't worry, I'll make sure to tell the dean everything. Um, and so they go back to their dorm, because they're roommates, and Alice blames Bree. Um... Alice, go on somewhere for real. Alice, kind of, we're supposed to believe Alice is, like, her best friend. We get a little bit of hints of, like, them being close friends, right? Like, them understanding, like, having inside jokes and blah, 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 right? Throughout this book. But Alice is kind of the worst in this book until, like, the last, like, 50 pages. (laughs) Here we are. We're, we have a healthier friendship than Brie and Alice. I love that for us. Um, it very much feels like uh, Tra- I think what happened is Tracy Dion wanted Bree to, like, actually have this best friend and uh, whatnot, right? Someone who understands her, uh, from someone from her past in this new world type thing. But she couldn't have them super close because then Alice would notice a bunch of weird magic shit's happening, right? Uh, with Bree. And so they, she has them push away from each other, mostly with Alice's doing, with all the shit she does. Uh, but it was too good because I 100% believe there are a lot of people who are like this is not true friendship like what the fuck is this shit um because she very much compensates for alice in this one in bloodmarked like alice is like over the top yeah, a great friend in bloodmarked and i was just like what the fuck <laughs> it's yeah, really it's a whiplash of reading them back to back let me tell you um so obviously uh them not really being arrested but being found at a party where there was alcohol and being picked up by police uh is a big no-no, so the dean calls them in, uh, you know, some basic rich white guy racism, this is, you know, um, right, Mm -hmm. uh, very much girls like you, um, so they're forced to basically have babysitters, um, to check on, in on them, right, who went through, like, the program, and so they can help them out, right, um, which does seem valid, as, like, I make I get it as for him his standpoint, uh get, having someone who went through the program who's now a college student, their freshman college student, uh helping them through uh this change of being out on their own, away from parents, and they've already gone into a little bit of trouble. It makes sense to have someone who like could be a peer looking on them. I get that aspect. Um so he also says that he's gonna call their parents, uh, and tell them everything. Um, uh, afterwards, uh, Brie, Brie, um, Brie has this thing where since her mother's died, um, uh, she's angry a lot. I get it. <laughs> um, so when microaggression racism happens with the dean, uh, she fights back. And the dean makes her, like, stay behind and is like, hey, no, um, you can't talk to me like that, sir. Shut the fuck up. Um, right? So when she goes back out after Alice has already left, and she's sitting there waiting, she's, like, crying, and Bree's, like, oh my god, I'm so pissed at him, and Alice is, like, cool, I'm pissed at you, because, like, we can ignore the microaggression racism, but how dare you fucking get me in trouble, you, <laughs> like, it's, it's, she, um, blames Bree, uh, how is that her fault, like, I know, right, it's a hundred percent her, don't worry, I, I will bring it up later, um, so, uh, basically, because, the dean calls their parents. She is now avoiding phone calls from her father. Yay! Her quote-unquote babysitter is named yeah. Nick. And she's also trying to, uh, like, she's also trying to avoid him. Uh, the classmate who brought Sasha and them to the party, who was a part of the program as well, I think, I think she's either second year of the program or a freshman in college, and she went to that same high school as them, right? So that's how she knows them. I also think her boyfriend is part of the secret society that comes up. Um, there's this little thing, like, within, like, the first, like, three pages, he's like, oh, yeah, you're Bree, the one whose mother died. Yeah. (laughs) First time reading it, I went, what the fuck? This time reading it, I went, (laughs) 
that's kind of funny. <laughs> like, that's, if ever, someone did that to me in real life, I would totally punch him in the face. But, reading it, I went, dude, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, right? So that friend, kind of friend, uh, texts her, uh, texts them and apologized for leaving them there when the police came. Um, and I quote my notes, I need Alice to understand that Prig couldn't magically get a car to appear and drive them back to campus when the classmate left them. Like, what did she expect her to do? Yeah. And, like, Alice's whole thing is like, well, you're the one that, like, said we should go to this party. And Bree's like, you said we should, like, socialize with people. Like, um, also, Alice yells at Brief for taking, quote, unquote, slacker classes, um, aka the basic level college courses. Um, because, like, oh my god, you could do, like, all this science stuff and all this literature stuff in your sleep. Like, why are you taking basic slacker classes? One, no matter what, she would have to take those classes no matter what, right? When she went to college, she would have to take them. So if she takes them now, she doesn't have to take the pre- Like, she doesn't have to take the prerequisite classes because she's already taken them. She's on a smart thing. And two, her whole reasoning is she assumed because it's a college-level course, it'd be a little harder. Yeah. Which is valid. Hear me out, Bree's valid in this, Auntie Bree. Um, anyways, Alice is like, you've changed, and I wrote, it's almost like her mother suddenly dying and uh, going through a traumatic experience is a thing yeah, that's going through. I was like, what the fuck is Alice? Um, the whole beginning of the vlog is just me being like, what the fuck is Alice all about? I know, right? Um, so this is where I bring up the fact that I'm suspicious of Nick the whole book, because, uh, when they meet, um, he gets his yeah, class, on that. he gets her class schedule from the dean or someone right because he's supposed to be her babysitter and so he waits outside of her class waiting for her to get out of class so he can follow her to her dorm as they have this whole fight conversation um and i would like to bring up the fact again that she is a teenage black girl and he's a rich white legacy 19 year old man Nick very I much gives me the type, the, Nick gives me the type where different. he's always had everything and he doesn't recognize, like, he knows that racism is a thing, but unless if he's, like, seeing it, it's not happening. And so, like, there's no way anyone could perceive this as, like, something suspicious or weird, because that's not what it's supposed to be. You you know what I'm trying I, to say? Meanwhile, Cell is someone no. who's been, uh, pushed to the side a lot, and... I'm sorry. I'm too sound Get him down. I, my favorite part of you reading this is when you were like, I actually like Nick, and I went, I fucking hate you. We can't be friends anymore. Well, I learned my lesson. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Um. No, because I keep forgetting the age difference. Like, it, I'm... Yeah, both him and Cell are 19. And uh, there are complaints I see where, like, Cell's 19 and she's 16. Like, that's a little suspicious. That's a little weird. Um, I think she's 16. She may be 17. I feel like she's six. I don't know. You, you're the expert. 16 sounds right. I don't know. I think she may actually be 17, because I remember in Bloodmark, there's this whole scene where she has a, it's her birthday, and I think that's when she turns 18, and that's, I think, I remember there a scene with a waterfall and her and Cell. Oh, oh, I haven't, oh. I need to finish that stupid book. <laughs> yes, you do. And then I can give you the bonus chapter. Um, where you get to learn, listen, I think you'll like the bonus chapter because it gives you more on Cell and Nick's background. Um, and them growing um, up together. Which is honestly the only time I've liked Nick. <laughs> let's be real. Um, I, I say that, but that. I feel like everything in this book could be solved with the power of thruple. And being as it's also kind of fruity, um, it could work out. <laughs> But I feel like, I feel like it's easy to, like, take it first, and slowly over time, you're like, excuse me? He, he's the type where he d could never understand, he doesn't understand what she goes through in the day and day of being a teenage black girl, right? Growing in, up in the I don't think he understands anything, honestly. Uh, that too. He's basically a himbo. That's an insult to himbos. He's, like, something else. True. I was like, you know, I was looking up himbos last night, and the first picture that showed up was Thor, and I laughed so hard. Because, <laughs> like, he's shown to be smart, but he's definitely himbo energy, and I love him for that. Um, anyways, that's beside the point. It's funny, because that would make Loki the twink in this. 
comparison, and, and we know I love me some twinks. Uh, Cell is an example of that. Especially since oh Cell is fruity. Spoilers. Cell is fruity. Um, in case you want to know how obsessed with Cell I am, he is my phone background. Yeah, yeah, we know. Because Rachel know. Dion released um, fan art, official fan art on her website, right? And you could, like, download the fan art uh, as, like, phone or computer background sizes, right? So I downloaded the Cell one, and that's my background. And I still have the photo on my phone. It's been your background for, for multiple years. years. Yes. I've not changed it. <laughs> Had issues. Um, before, I, yeah. before that, it was a cool mermaid scene. I would like you to know this. It was like an undead mermaid thing in lava. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I know, it's fine. Um, so, basically, Nick is following this black teenage girl. She tries to get away from him and go home. Uh, and as this is happening, uh, she sees some more of some weird magic stuff. So she runs towards it, and Nick tries to stop her. And they run directly into a demon dog. Uh, that asks its saliva as her arm. Literally, I wrote this down. And then I went, I'm not sure if it's actually a demon dog and if it was acid saliva that hurt her. So I looked it into the book. I read, I like opened it to that page and read that section. And I went, oh no, it's a hellhound and it burned her with the acid saliva on her arms. The memory I have. I, I can't remember the first, a uh, good chunk of my high school years because I blocked it out. But don't worry, I remember this book. We made a joke that if I have amnesia or dementia, I'm going to be quoting this book still. Yeah, that's. Me with the Wizard King. You made that joke about me with the Wizard King before. I'm like, yeah. Accurate. If I have amnesia and they need to figure out my identity and you have to come to see if I'm actually me, uh, you just have to ask me uh, about the cell shirtless scene or the gala scene. And I'll tell you. Don't worry. And then you'll be like, yeah, that's well, her. That's not wouldn't recognize your face. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have a secret twin. I don't know. Um, girl. Uh, so basically, uh, she passes out from the pain. Nick takes her to the Order's magical wing. Uh, Secret Society is the ma- Order, right? Um, Nick is suspicious of how she sees the magic, which is valid, um, because this is, like, so, no, nothing ever seen before. Uh, he, okay, uh, I'm not gonna go into details yet, but, um, he is supposed to be, like, highest level of the order, he's the heir, blah, 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 um, but he decides to leave the order because he's not into all that legacy bullshit, and so, <laughs> um, so he assumes that she's able to see the matchup because she joined the order, and they sent her to, uh, get him to rejoin the order, and that's why she can see magic. Um, but that's not it. Uh, she explains that Cell tried to wipe her memory once before and it didn't stick. Uh, so he covers for her when Cell comes to do it again, um, about the attack, and then he basically takes her back to her door, right? Um, so she later realizes the weird effects of the change slash wiped memories remind her of when her mother died and thinks the Order had something to do with it. Uh, so now she's the one tracking Nick down to his class. Um, and brings up her suspicions. Uh, also, I would like to know in this scene, so, they're, like, it's, like, an upperclassman course, right? Um, I think it's a chemistry class, and they're supposed to do, like, class work with a partner, right? And so she just takes the paperwork, he, she's, like, asking questions, he's, like, I gotta do my class work. So she just takes the paperwork and just answers all the questions. <laughs> and my note for this is, um, because she's better than him in every way. That's my love, exact quote for me. We love women in STEM. We do love Robin and Step. Also, she's a Jane Austen fan. I feel like... Why I feel why like... That? I feel you like... I could... Be her best friend and totally marry Cell in the... Wo- I mean... <laughs> I have issues. Uh-huh. What What would be the equivalent... What, what word would you use for a four-person couple? <laughs> I would not be with Nick. No, no, no. I'm kicking that bitch out. I'm taking his place. I can be a blonde himbo if they need me to be. Oh, my God. No one said you had to be with him. I just mean, like, as a whole. I don't want him here. He can leave. Um, um, oh, so he girl. states it's believable that the Order would cover up her mother's death if something magical was involved and promised to look into it at an upcoming event. Cough, cough. He never does! (laughs) 
I'll bring it up later. It all counts, don't worry. Um, she's able to use photos of uh, school buildings and her memories of the medical wing to find the Order's meeting spot. Iconic. I... Iconic. Um, oh, okay, I gotta open up I the actual book. Sure. I'm Della. So, um, she goes there and knocks on the door. She says that she's there for Nick. Uh, so everyone thinks that she's there to be his quote-unquote pledge. Um, and that this is the Nick that, sign that Nick's going to rejoin the Order, right? And that's why she's there. Because, uh, you know, the event that's happening. Um, I wrote down page 92. Let me quote to you this sentence I highlighted. Um, I think of what it might cost me to infiltrate the Order, to succeed in an institution founded by men who could have legally owned me and wanted to. Just give you the vibe of this book. Yeah. I'm doing it very lighthearted, but trust me, it's heavy <laughs> with the grief and the sadness and that anger about how wronged her whole line has been, and it's just so palpable sometimes. Um, and so I love it. I was thinking the first time I the first time I've only read it once when I first started it because I'm like, girl, you relate to this, girl. <laughs> I have issues. Listen, I'll pay for your therapy. I got health insurance. <laughs> oh. I was going to say one of us does, but technically so do I. Um, so basically, so it feels that you can't, like, do therapy, like, over the phone, girl. <laughs> uh, basically, he agrees to put her through the trials as his pledge uh, while they investigate her mother's death. Um, and now, because Bree is coming home late every night, right, that she's doing stuff for the order, uh, Alice is believing she's going out partying every night. Which, of course, leads to another fight. Well, why would... Hear me out. Brie doesn't seem like the party type. Not really. So why the fuck would she be partying? I, literally... See, I think part of the thing is that when she had the saliva burns and whatnot, the excuse Cell had for when they dragged her home was she was out partying she drank too much, right? And so... Alice went, that's a little suspicious, that's a little yeah. weird, but then with the fact that Brie being out almost every night after that, she's like, oh, you're out partying and doing all this stuff without me, and but you're a completely question. different person. Like, um, what the fuck? She yeah. just um, her ass. Like, so, uh, we gotta talk about some good old roots. Uh, Brie's father, he's a man who is worried about his daughter. Uh, for obvious fucking <laughs> reasons. Uh, he understands I don't think he fully understands the extent of her anger uh, when it comes to her grief, but he understands it's there and she should totally talk to someone. So he finds this decayed big psychologist uh, who is one of black women, positives. Uh, I know that's a lot of thing with uh, people of color going to therapy wanting someone of the same race to be their therapist. Makes sense. Um, especially black women with black women. It makes sense. Um, so that... But also, she happened to go to UNC at the same time as Bree's mother. Like, that's crazy. So she, like, wasn't, like, close friends with her, but, like, knew of her, and they were nice to each other type thing. Um, so it definitely pushes her to go just because she wants to hear about her mother, right? Um, yeah. Uh, but she realizes, uh, the doctor can see the magic, too. Uh, I think they meet up at, like, this statue, um... A good old colonization statue. Good old set. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, like, Brie can see the magic there, right? Uh, but so can, uh, the doctor. And I haven't gotten to Here the lore dump of the order yet, because it hasn't, like, most of it hasn't come up, but, like, it's a thing that the magic things have happened, right? So, um, Ooh. she questions her about the doctor explains the basic idea of roots, which is an African ancestral magic, depending on each line, um, on what your, like, special ability is, right? Uh, and how she didn't know that Bree's mother had it. Like, it's ancestral, so, like, Bree's mother had it, but she didn't know Bree's mother had it. Um, mm -hmm. also, because, like, Bree sees that she didn't see, see magic, it's like, hey, you part of the order? Um, uh, and she, the, uh, doctor's like, uh, we don't fuck with those hoes. <laughs> Um, I feel like a legend for it would be like I hope you're not going to say that okay. uh, would be like a good introduction for someone who hasn't read very much about 
black characters and like especially not much about black characters experience and racism and they could like translate that easier to like real life and understand what people are going through does that make sense mm. i think she went to unc for eight years <laughs> sorry i was reading the authors about all oh the things God. in the book and she got her but master's degree saying. i did hear um she got her master's degree in communication and performance studies from unc because Which I mean, feel she's like smart. It doesn't, she's smart. It doesn't hurt it, but it also isn't, like, too, like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It doesn't like, hide from like it, but it's not the only thing it's not about a, type thing. It's going to be happening. Um, know? anyways, uh, because of this, Brie realizes her mother didn't want her to go to UNC, that whole fight they had right before she died, um, because of Ruth and the Order, right? Um, okay. We got the order lore dump. Uh, what page do I have to open up to? Because I know there's, like, a prophecy that I want to read off at least one line of. Uh, so let me pull that up. Like, I feel like it could make, like, it could, like, flip the switch in someone's brain to be like, oh, yeah. this is what they're talking about. Okay, L- lore time dump for the order. So a long time ago, Arthur and his knights were fighting demons, but they were dying out. So Merlin made a spell so his knights were reborn every generation and become their quote-unquote scions, uh, which basically means they get the power of their ancestor, right? Um, special ability of that ancestor. Some of them have, like, Gawain's is uh, special healing abilities. That's William, who's a side character, but he's more of an important character in Bloodmarked. Um, there's she ones that really have up. specific powers and bows. Arthur's is the long sword, right? Uh, there's, like, a, at the end of the book, there's, like, this whole entire thing that's, like, all the different, uh, ranks. There's 13 ranks, and, uh, all the bloodlines and their sigils and their colors and their inheritance and their weapons and all this stuff. Um, like, Arthur's is, uh, the king's wisdom and strength. So that's, like, a whole thing at the end of the book. Uh, good times, right? Um, so, once they turn 16... Until they're, like, 25-ish, they can become a scion, uh, if that member of the order is awoken, right? Um, and that's kind of important. Uh, the amount awoken each generation is dependent on demon attack numbers. That doesn't get brought up until later, but that's, like, kind of a thing. Um, uh, starting at the bottom and ending at Arthur, a.k.a. Nick. Nick is the scion of Arthur. Are you supposed to be? He's at the age where he's supposed to become the scion of Arthur. Uh, um, no. But, um, thanks. Um, with all the recent demon attacks, uh, more being awoken all the time, they don't know that this is a direct cause yet. That does not happen, that realization doesn't happen until, like, 400 pages in, let me tell you. Um, but that is what is happening. Uh, there's all these demon attacks, more often than normal, and it's waking more of the scions. So, uh, something suspicious happening there. Um, uh, each sign has a squire when they're awoken, uh, which is what the pages, which is what Bree is doing right now. Page, she's in the page competition thing, and once you, if you succeed the page competition, you can be chosen to be a squire, right? Which is why people don't really like that she's here, um, because she is a random black girl who skipped all the lines and is now possibly going to be the squire of Arthur. Um, and the, uh, like, the squire's like, purpose is to share the scion's burden yeah. and ability so they have the same magical abilities as their scion. But, like, they also, like, um, help them deal with stuff, blah, 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 uh, protect them, all that stuff. Um, okay, page 139, prophecy. When 13 scions have awakened and claimed squires, the scion of Arthur will lead the round table against the demon plague in its deadly battle. Uh, the war is called Camelon, uh, so named because in Legend of Camelon is where many of the final knights were killed. Camelon is the battlefield where Arthur fell. Camelon is where the original round table was broken forever. If a fully awakened Arthur is struck down by Shadowborn blood, aka demons, uh, the Legendborn lines will be broken forever, too. Basically saying, oop, Camelon may be happening soon. Um, just saying. Hello. Um, well. So, each Arthur has the most powerful Merlin of their generation magically bound to them, and that's Cell. So, Cell and Nate are bound, or Nate, Nick are bound together. Um, Merlins are part demon, 
I don't think that's learned until, like, near the end of this book, too. Uh, and so come to the darkness more each year. Uh, which is why the bind is, like, really important, because with the oath and being bound, especially at a really, really young age, um, it keeps the demon blood from taking over slightly longer. But eventually you do kind of go insane and go evil. Are you sure I don't have demon blood? I'm just is saying, that... it's heavily hinted oh, at that that's possibly a complete fucking lie. To control people. Of power, so that the, 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 uh, white men can have more power. Cough, cough. Um, so that's why the Oath uh, of Merlin's is a big deal, because it stops them from going full darkness. Uh, the Lancelot line is, to be, is believed to be at another school. Cough, cough. <laughs> we know things, but hopefully you do if you're listening to this episode. I'm just making faces right now. <laughs> no one can see it, but I'm making faces like cough, cough. Um, okay. Uh, I think there. Oh yeah, another thing I wanted to bring up that I didn't put in my notes. But you might be like, hey, what men in power? But there's women scions now. Um, especially since one of the scions, I believe, uh, is mixed. Um, I think her father's from the Philippines, don't quote me on that. Um, it's, like, her mother's the part from the line, um, and people just pretend that she's white until there's, like, an event where her father's there, and then they just, like, they're a little iffy about it. Um, women have not been able to be signs until very recently. Like, that's, like, a new thing, like, within the past generation or two. Um, right? Uh, which is a big deal when, uh, someone becomes a sign, not saying anything, um, anyways, trials, um, there's this whole thing where, uh, they get their, the ability to see magic, uh, and so she has to pretend to be able to see magic for the first time, and also, uh, part of it is you have to ha do this oath, and she is worried that the oath is going to betray that she, uh, has secret information and is looking into things and is actually not here for the oath, but for some reason the oath goes through, it turns a little, but it goes through, um, so, uh, some of Cell being Merlin to Nick's Arthur is kind of important. Uh, Cell believing there's no way Bree showing up to two demons attack, two demons attacks now is a coincidence. I kind of get his point, right? Like, his whole entire job is to protect Nick from demons, right? And there's this random girl that in the past week has been at two separate demon attacks, like, days apart from each other. And it... She happens to be near Nick during one of them, and now her and Nick are kind of, like, they're starting to get a little flirty. And so he's like, oh, she's definitely a demon. <laughs> so I mean, he, he leaves her alone in the woods with a demon, and is like, handle it yourself, or uh, prove that you're actually a demon and then it won't kill you. Um, She does body it. Kind of cool. It takes a lot of effort, and she is heavily injured. Um... But, uh, from that, he learns, oh, whoop, she's not a demon. No shit, bestie. <laughs> um, I will state, the first time I read this, I was kind of getting annoyed with the Nick's whole entire, sa or not Nick's, Cell's whole entire standoffish thing with her being like, you're secretly a demon. Um, I was starting to get really annoyed, and I was about to be like, God, this bitch is so fucking annoying. And then it switches We're to him doing that and being like, oh shit, you're not a demon. Right or at the point where I was at the point of being like, I'm fucking sick of this. Um, so, you know, her timing for that is perfect. Um, I feel like so, going back and forth with the characters makes it more interesting. True. Um, obviously Nick is pissed about this. Uh, so he throws, um, him around. Uh, but Cell can't attack back and protect himself. Uh, because of the mage bond, he cannot hurt or harm Arthur. And Bree nor I do not like how Nick is taking advantage of this. Real. And uh, I'm just saying, it's a red flag. Um, we just make a few friends, uh, so, among the other pages mostly, uh, mostly those of the other rich white people turn their eye from, uh, are those that she befriends. Uh, there's William, she does slightly befriend, who is a scion. Of really? Way. But, uh, Greer is one of them who is non-binary, um, who they kind of just, like, they low-key talk about how everyone just accepts, accepts them just because I think it's their father, like, pays an exorbitant amount of money so that a queer can be accepted. Um, also, I love how the queer one is named Greer. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't notice that until I was saying it out loud. <laughs> um, 
Uh, oh god, so this is the point where Cell, now that Cell is no longer team, you're secretly demon, um, this is where I turned into, uh, the, the Cell simp I am, including some great a me being team Cell when he makes jokes about no one needing more therapy than him, parentheses, sorry fish, and baiting Bree with the idea that Nick wow. doesn't care about all the legacy crap, but cares about Bree. I'm sorry, Cell needs more therapy than you. Um, sure. But, do you want me to go into detail about Shirtless Cell, or would you like me to, uh, just go off my memory about Shirtless Cell? Because I can do both. It's whatever you want, Bestie. This is your episode. I'm so happy. I'm, just I'm, I'm, I'm so happy right now. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> yeah, I know this. Um, so, she, uh, wants to go to so I don't remember why. I think it's something to do with the fact that she feels bad that he's getting all the shit because, uh, he was like, uh, oh, you're a demon, and then she's not a demon. Um, and so everybody's like, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're talking about, you're totally failing at your job because he believed that she was there for non-right reasons. But she definitely is. She's just there to figure out what happened to her mom, so she decides to go to cell and have a conversation. But he just got out of the shower, so he's shirtless. Oh my god, yeah, I forgot about that. That's why I forgot. So did I. Somehow I forgot about this. Um, yeah, the whole time I was like, what are you talking about? When was he shirtless? Yeah, this, yeah, I understand that. I'm just gonna read some of this to you. I don't care. Um, and Shrek thought, list. Because Cell flings the door open wearing nothing but a deeply annoyed expression and a pair of low slung jeans. Oh! <laughs> yes! Yep! <laughs> I would like everyone to know, page 345 is my sexuality. In just a page. Um, I can help but follow the path of banded muscles from his abdomen to his chest. Intricate black and gray tattoos encircle his arms, cover his shoulders, and connect in a Celtic knot on his breastbone. I should have liked oh but instead I noticed the droplets of water that fall from his back, his thick black hair, and the tiny transparent beads still clinging to his lashes. Um, like he's not any accessories, and he's just gen generally hot. Like how 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 are you gonna like fight that? Like, I know, right? Um, he's like go away, and so um she steps forward uh, cause she's like can I come in? So uh she steps forward. Uh he shoots a toned arm out across the doorway to block my path. Uh, he wipes a hand down his face to dis my dismay. It does extremely distracting things to his stomach muscles. No, things I don't oh want God. to notice. Can you please put a shirt on so we can have a serious conversation? Um, and then we get, um, he's, he, uh, uh, she is trying to help him figure out stuff with, like, the mages being stripped of power. Doesn't and, like, the shirt that not help? help? She's like, oh my God. I know, right? The way it wraps around his side. The way it's um, like a but he's all like, sure, sure, I'll put on a shirt. So, um, it stretches across the surface, veins, his back, and sends heat from my chest to my toes. When he pulls the t-shirt out, I breathe a slight, slight sigh of relief. Clothes are good, I think, in general, on people, on cell especially. But then he shrugs the tea on, and it fits like him like a second skin, a martial improvement at best. The way um, she's so hard and bothered over the fact he just wasn't wearing a shirt. Like, <laughs> I know, right? Um, and then she, uh, she basically gives her, his, her, she gives him his, her whole theory about a possible king's mage who was stripped of their power. I think it's supposed to be his mother, but I don't know. Um, and so he, she says, say something afterwards, because he's just, like, sitting there in silence, and he says something. I'm a simple bitch. Um. That's so me coded. I know, right? Um, anyways, there's a Twilight reference in this book. Oh my god, yeah, I forgot about that. So she's all like, hey, I was looking to this stuff because I want to figure out if the order has something to do with my mom's set. And he's like, oh, well, I know what place where we can get information. Remember how, um, like, weeks ago Nick was supposed to help her get information? Um, so to get there, he decides the best route, because he can, like, jump really high, run really fast, is to just, like, climb out his window and hook her around him. I know. He That's wraps so his iron farm around my thighs, pressing them to his chest. Everywhere our skin touches leaves a trail of sparks. And then and then he gives her a piggyback ride out of the window. She's like, please tell me you're not jumping out of this window right now. And he says, I'm not jumping out of this window right now. As he's jumping out the window. Um, anyways, it's fucking hilarious. Um, 
So they Here go. We go. <gasps> Why am I kind of cell coded? I know, right? Um, she also. Am I saying I know, right? Um, she also admits with this uh, to the, to him that uh, he's not the first Marla to mess with her. Uh, because there was one with the night her mother died. Um, Nami saying he decides to help her look into it and actually does, unlike Nick. Uh, so, uh, the story, before they go into looking information, uh, Nick's mother was, quote-unquote, disappeared. And Cell's mother was killed by a demon. Um, also, I have to bring up that Cell is confirmed by Goth in this scene. Uh, he is Goth this whole time. Uh, there's a point with the gala where he is wearing an all-black tux. I'm a simple bitch. Um, but also, he is bi, uh, cause throughout this book, he definitely has a thing with Bree. You cannot tell me he does not. They straight up kiss in the next one. They have a thing. Okay? Spoiler. They do oh, kiss at some point. Like, like I said before, you're so obsessed with someone and the fact you want to take them out. No, you want to take them out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, uh, when uh, he was bonded with Nick and they were, like, growing up together, um, he had a crush with Nick. It's like, it's said in this whole scene where he's like, listen, I get your being, you being into Nick. Uh, he has this good boy, golden retriever thing about him that makes it so you can't help but fall in love with him. I fell for it, too. And I'm just saying, I love him. This is the bi- We're so normal. This is the bi representation we all needed. <laughs> I'm so normal. Um, yeah, you are. So, she, he takes her to a records room. She's like, it's hey, why did Nick not take me Hear me out. She's like, hey, why no, did Nick... Jack and August. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, she's like, why did Nick uh, not take me to this records room? That's a little weird. Um, and so I was like, he probably didn't know about it. It's fine. Um, so they find a bunch of records that Nick's father had written uh, from when her mother was going to college and he was a sign of Arthur right, uh, about how a few demon attacks on campus around the time mom, Bree's mom was going there, uh, the gist is Sal's mother was the Merlin on duty when the attacks happened, and they found evidence she opened the gates and was sent to containment, uh, not killed, how Sal was told, um, Sal and Bree bought over their grief, uh, Bree's mother was there during one of the attacks and was watched for years afterwards, her death was just a normal hit and run, um, Cell realizes if Bree can see the magic and avoid mesmerizing, her mother probably could too. Um, which means that she hid the fact that she remembered from the Order for decades. Right? Um, Bree has a ba breakdown. I think they're back in Cell's room now. She has a breakdown. Um, about how she went to UNC and the Order, uh, despite everything her mother did to protect her from their world, and how they quote unquote, usually violently handle things they don't understand and Cell's like, yeah um, and tries to comfort her uh, and she's like storming out saying she should never join the order and goes to open the door and guess who's there at Cell's bedroom door? It's Nick! Dun dun dun! Um, L-O-L! Uh, I need to stop saying that. Like anyway, these, she's I literally crying, having a breakdown, and Nick's feelings are jealous that she went searching with Cell and not him. Quote me in all caps, he's the one who actually did any looking into it, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a simple bitch. Um, okay, so there's a gala. It's been hinted at it for a while. I think this is, I thought this was the scene where the rich white lady is, uh, like, calling, making her the servant. Um, and whatnot, but I think it was an earlier scene, because I couldn't find it in the scene, um, but basically, Brie wasn't gonna go anymore, she's quit, um, right, but Alice hears of this, and she's now only being a good friend to get her there, she's all like, oh, I was so excited for you to dress up, Alice, Please be um, so her dad comes for a visit, and gives her some, uh, a note and a box from her mother, she takes it back to the dorm, um, and in the box are Bree's memories that her mother put in there, talking about how the woman in their family die young. Cough, cough, like the signs from the constant use of magic. That's the thing. Signs usually die really young. If you actually, like, if you actually become a sign, if the, uh, 
ghost, I don't know, powers of your ancestor comes out through you, you will probably die before you're, like, 25. Um, because of the constant use of magic. And there's, like, a whole thing where the woman and her family keep on dying really young. That's so stupid. So right? Um, so Bree decides to reconnect with, uh, roots, her roots of roots. Uh, so the doctor, uh, gets in contact with another member of Roots to try and help figure out what, uh, Bree's Roots power is, right? Um, and basically she's a medium. Uh, there's this whole line about how she's a special connection to death. Um, and so she has a brief conversation with her grandmother she's never met, and, uh, there's, like, this whole thing where most scenes from now on, there is a little bit of her grandmother talking to her in her head. <laughs> Seeing everything no, being like, what's that boy? I don't trust that boy. God, I love it. Insane, for real. Um, but Bree wants to know, uh, why they all die young, right? Um, like, she recognizes some weird things with the Order and the fact that they all die young and have the woman in her family die young. That's a little weird. And how was she able to see magic? Uh, I think that was a roots thing. But it was like, why do they die young? That's, like, a little weird. Um... So she's like, hey, Grandma, do you know? And Grandma's like, nah. And I talked to all the other ghosts I could find, and they also don't know. Um, I'm going to go find Vera, the uh, oldest ancestor, the first mother of mothers is what she's called, uh, in the spirit realm. Uh, so throughout this book, she's also trying to find Vera. The grandmother is. You know, good time. Hear me out. Hear me out. How did Miss Dion's little brain, Miss Tracy right? Dion, how did her little brain just do all this? I forgot to mention like, I forgot to mention a very important fact, which is Katie Robert read Bunch Boy of Bloodmark recently and is obsessed oh with them, God. which is, literally, she was talking about them on threads, loving them, and then Tracy Dion was freaking out because Katie Robert was loving her books, and I was watching this happen just like, oh my God! When worlds collide. My mothers! <laughs> um, so, uh, Bree agrees to go to the gala to say goodbye, right? Um, there's, like, a friend who really likes fashion and lends her a dress. Uh, sell? Really into that dress. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, uh, she quickly notices all the servants at this gala are people of color. Yeah, that was so fucked up. I was like, what? Fuck! Oh, hold on! <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh, meanwhile, all the people there are white, minus her, and, uh, the one... Sion, who, father, who is, I think, Filipino, I don't remember, um, and her. So, like, three people out of, like, 25-ish, at least? No, because there's also everyone who supports the order, like, the police and whatnot, who, like, get money from the order and do what they say and stuff like that. So, like, basically, it's a bunch of white people being served by a bunch of black people in the South. You see, you see the discrepancies here? It's all over. Um, so, uh, Nick, she goes to have a conversation with Nick, you know, like, I gotta leave, and he's like, you didn't call me back. Uh, Nick's father sends his, oh, oh. I know, right? He sends his creepy Merlin, who's named Isaac, to get Nick. Nick goes to meet with his father, and Isaac is making some suspicious looks at Bree, right? Um, Cell saves her, and they dance, and I'm okay. I totally don't think about the scene every day. Um, I'm so stressed. She can smell his magic, which is different. Like, that's not a normal thing. Um, and he's like, you no, smell his magic? No, the idea that he can smell his magic does something to me, because we're not going to talk it's like, about it. It's like the stereotype of, like, men's, like, the usually male character being, like, your scent or something like that in, like, paranormal romances, right? Uh... But it's her who's be able to smell him because of his magic, and there's, like, an actual in-lore reason why she can smell him. Right? And it's actually important in Bloodmark because that's how she can tell uh, which Merlin did which things. Um, and how she can, like, use stuff with Cell. So, yeah. Um, and it actually has a purpose. Anyways, he's like, you can smell my magic? You are full of surprises. LOL. Anyways, this is the scene where he's, like, basically macking on her neck to tell her information, and Nick is watching them dance. And We're just, just, like, giggling and kicking our feet. Alright. Um, so it's time for Nick to pick his squire, and he chooses Bree. Um, we get some good old racism. <laughs> uh, this is one of the more blatant, 
scenes of racism, there are uh, lines like she will dirty the blood line. What? Like, uh, what the hell are you on about? Uh, the blood lines are only fucked up. Be so for real. Um, so obviously, Nick made a whoopsie and he doesn't get blamed for this. Uh, Nick and Sal get her out, uh, and then go to handle the situation when she's mesmer attacked. Bum, bum, bum! Um, Nick's father had kidnapped her because, yay, racism, parentheses, and sexism, and classism. No wonder his wife tried to leave him. Yeah, that's why she was, quote, quote, disappeared. Uh, because she did not support the order, and specifically Nick's father, Lord Davis. That's a, that, he, I actually call him by his name now. Uh, because he kind of becomes important in the scene. Lord Davis, uh, she did not like him because of the things that he does, uh, which will become very obvious in this scene. Um, uh, so she tried to take Nick and leave, and so she, he had her, quote, quote, disappeared. Because she was crazy. Like, like, just... I'm on Team Lady Davis. We don't yeah. know her name, but I'm on Team Her. Where is she? Here, they never try I to would, find I her, would... and I want to know where she is. Tracy? Tracy, I will go on towards that. I will at you, and I'll be like, hey. Hear me out. I would be the person to be disappeared because I'm crazy. I know. Um, It's so sad. So surprise, surprise, Lord Davis. Would you if I was disappeared because I was crazy? Um, he was the one who wow. tried to open the porters, portals uh, long ago and let demons attack so they could, so he could become Arthur. Um, which remember when he wrote those letters, being like, "Hey, it's totally this Merlin who it is Cell's mother." Basically, he um he blamed Cell's mother, and so she then she was committed as well for things that he was doing. Yep. Uh, so, uh, it's now he... It's man who ever lives. I know, right? So, he's starting a war, so Nick can become Arthur. And he can control Nick. Because he's Nick's father, so then he has all the power. What? Uh-huh. Gotta break something to you, bestie. Um, don't... A lot of the scene is really being like, Dude, what the fuck do you mean you want a war? Like, war is bad. Like, it's war. And he's all like, But war brings us great things. She's like, You're Delulu. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Um, like, like how how can you not comprehend that war is bad? People are like, oh my god, war! Like, are you okay? Why do you want to hurt people? I think you need to be locked up. Um, there's also a part where he says that uh, there's no way she's going to be his own squire uh, because she's uh, wrong in two ways, hinting at that she's both a girl and also black. Nah. Like, um, I just can't wrap my brain around this nonsense. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, he, in order to make sure that Bree stays away from Nick so that he can control Nick, he has also taken Alice. And he is using Isaac to slowly remove Alice's memories a week at a time until Bree agrees. Can you fucking imagine? Um... And if she doesn't stay away, he'll send her to the mages to be experimented on. He, like, hint, like it's heavily hinted at that, like, maybe it's not in your brain why you could see magic this whole time. Uh, but we'll figure it out. Uh. Uh, so, basically, Brie agrees for not that long. Um... And goes to take Alice home and uses her connection with her grandmother and their magic. That's another thing. Bree has her own magic. That's not a normal oh, yeah. thing. That's not a normal thing. Uh, that's a rude thing. Uh, she uses their magic and knowledge to bring Alice's memories back. So now Alice knows everything. And now is assigned to be a good friend. And he's all like, we gotta go help. Uh, so they go back to the order. Uh, she basically says that Alice is just another... Uh, not Squire, but Paige. Paige, that's what she is. Uh, just another Paige. Right. Um, they go back to the Order, but Nick and his father have left already. Um, and she tells those who are there what's happening with Nick's father. And they're like, oh no, we have to go after them into this specific cave. Also, okay, um, this is where we get the big battle time. We all know I don't like big battles. That being said, this one was stressful. Um, yeah. So, don't so stressful. What are you on about? <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so there's a cave 
with a bunch of demons. Uh, Cell went with some of the others. I think Tor was one of the main ones. Um, another thing is Tor is one that is very um, heavily racism kind of things at the end of this book. Uh, but she... Pause. Uh-huh. Am I correct to think there was some fruitiness in some of the pages, right? Am I, like, is it Tor fruity? Yes, that's what I was just bringing up. Um, that yeah, she is the Tor is the Tristan one, and she uh right before this was awoken, awakened, and uh her uh but, but not her not Zion her Squire there we go Squire happens to be her girlfriend. Yeah, that uh, made me feel the same way. So when Tor uh. Started, you like her? She was badly With all injured. That? Uh, her squire brought her back to be healed by Will and his new squire. But um, Cell went in on his own. Brief rallies the group to go in after, and there's a good number of casualties. I'm not going to go into detail because me and Big Bells don't go well. Um, so there's a big battle. A lot of people die. Uh, there's a demon who is impersonating one of the people. Whoa, I because when they went underground at this part, I was like, oh my god. Um... So, basically, she gets to the center, which is where Excalibur is, and also where Nick and his father are. And this demon, who has been impersonating one of the pages, I believe, uh, threatens Bree if Nick doesn't waken by taking Excalibur and therefore making so the demons can end the line by killing Nick and causing Felman, right? Um, he's about to body Bree when Cell comes in and saves her. Uh, he... Tussles with the main demon. Uh, Nick tries to pull the sword out of the stone. But what? <laughs> it doesn't work. This is the part when I read it every time. I was skimming. I wasn't even reading reading. I was skimming it for fun. And I my heart rate was racing because it's so stressful. But also no, so Nick dramatic. Happened, okay. And also what so well written. Fun? It's just... Uh, I need everyone to read this section at least. Um, anyways, this is the sword out. It doesn't work. Oh! Time stops, and Grandma found the first Mother Vera, who shows her everything. Uh, welcome to my favorite yeah. chapters, oh, chapters God. 54 and 55, uh, which are basically an eight-page poem. Right? God, the way she wrote this. is an eight-page poem, basically, about how Vera was a slave on the Davis Plantation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Davis and his wife... God? Davis and his wife don't have any children, uh, and... Mrs. Davis is having an affair with Reynolds, who is the known Lancelot at the time, right? Um, so Davis, one night, rapes her, um, and she ends up getting pregnant. Uh, because the sign of Arthur can't be the child of a slave, uh, he plans to kill her, so she runs. Uh, she prays, while she's running, they're, like, about to catch her, so she prays to her ancestors for safety, and ends up doing the scion blood thing, bond thing. Uh, through her ability to walk through time and death, Bree is able to see the night her mother died without the glimmer and realizes the police officer who glimmered her was Cell's mother. And Why am I about to cry right now? What the know, fuck? Like, this is so true. Like, just thinking about this, it's just insane. Bree accepts her destiny and accepts Arthur in and pulls Excalibur free. Now. No, and that's. And I, I. Oh my god. Um. So, there's another thing. Uh, when she does describe this to all the others, uh, they're like, okay, so it's typical, like, basic, like, Arthurian Lancelot type thing where she's, the wife was Guinevere, um, except with Lancelot, and Arthur was just out here being a slave owner. Um, love that. Um, so, here's the thing. Bree, 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 uh, is a medium, remember, with the roots magic? So, because of that, when she calls upon the Scion of Arthur, it's not like others where they just get, like, a little bit of the abilities and whatnot. Um, she's straight up possessed by him. That was, uh, that, uh, the, uh, you know, like, uh, uh. And she's able to see everything, and she's like, what the fuck? Um, uh, and basically, as being possessed by Arthur, Bree calls Nick Lancelot. He's Lancelot. Remember how she's Arthur, he's Lancelot, and Cell is Merlin. I'm just saying, Cell is 
the gayest thing you could do is make Cell both Merlin and Guinevere. And then you make it a throuple. I'm just saying. No, I don't know any of the scenes. I'm just agreeing with you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, like I understand partially. I Listen, every time I think about this book, I contemplate reading the original, like Le Morte de Arthur. I have a collector's edition leather-bound copy of Le Morte de Arthur. Like, I could read it. It's right there. It's within my eyesight. You're it's trying on the shelf right next to my copies of Legendborn and Bloodmarked. Like, Why haven't you read it? Like, are you Because okay? it's long. If there's the, the font size is like size two, and the number of pieces you is like size one. read what the fuck is it called? The War and Peace? All these other books? We don't need to talk about War and Peace. Um, yeah. Anna Karina is longer, and I do plan to read Anna Karina this year, but that's beside the point. Um, there's also artwork in my copy. It's very pretty. Um, anyways, uh, when this happens, Lord Davis, he runs right out of there. He's like, bye, bitch. I tried to murder this girl, and she's actually Arthur, and has super abilities. I'm gone. That was kind of funny. Um, so, uh, she, oh, also with the generating of her own magic thanks to Roots, uh, she, I think it's Roots. Here, let me check the table. Uh, yeah, no, it, it doesn't say anything with her, like, being able to, uh, control magic or make her own magic that's like a thing where like making magic is very difficult certain demons uh the only reason they're able to get magic is by siphoning magic from mages right um and killing mages so like the fact that she can make her own magic she's kind of op and i love her um uh not my next sentence she becomes a girl boss and defeats the demons what else would you call it? I don't know. Um, also, with the power of Arthur, you know, being, like, one of his things is, like, being able to, like, order them or something like that. Here, let me look it up. Uh, wisdom and strength. Uh, basically, she is able to make it so all the other scions follow her. Um, and there's nothing to do about it. And then they bow down to her. I think Cell's, like, the first one. Cell or Nick are the first ones. And she's like, I don't want this. <laughs> um... So the Order and Davis took Nick while she's passed out, because using a lot of magic takes a lot of work. Um, so she explains to everyone uh, basically how she's the sign of Arthur and cough, cough, this racism, and not good times. Um, Tor especially, but generally some racism, and this is all, uh, oh, saying this is all an accident. Like, saying Bree's not her, uh, king, this is all an accident, um, and- No, but- Alex, they're, like, they're like, um, cause slavery is totally an accident. Which, yeah, go off, queen. I don't like it most of the time, Alice, but I get you there. Um, right. Um, the head mages have sent a message saying that they're coming and they want to run tests on Bree. Cell is trying to make it so that does not happen, um, uh, she tells him about seeing his mother, uh, in, when her mother died. Her mo his mother was there, and how she hasn't been taken over by demon's blood, which is another sign of the order line for power, and he's like, oh, and he's like, I don't, I can't think about that. I gotta, like, get Nick, and I gotta protect you, and all this stuff, right? Um, oh, more pages, page 487 and 488. That's like the very the book ends at four ninety. Oh wow. Uh oh god, okay. Mm-hmm. I feel Cell's attention on my cheeks. I wonder when the sparks in his eyes had become a comforting heat. What I remember looking up at him. You are my king now, Cariad. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I did look it up. That uh, is love in Welsh. They talk in high Welsh sometimes. Um there is a whole scene. Where basically Nick and Cell are communicating in Welsh in front of her, and she doesn't know enough about it, so she's just like, "What is happening?" And I looked it all up, and let me tell you, I'm a simple bitch. Um, his little voice carries all the intense intimacy of a caress, and his eyes are a melted gold. I turn away, overwhelmed at the meaning in both. I don't ask him what it means, because in my heart, I'm scared of the answer. Scared to be torn into once more when my reality has been a slow shatter all morning. 
Cell touches my chin, guides my face back to him. Cal Camlin has come. Have I been pronouncing it wrong this whole time? Probably. Camlin has come. Um. Why am I crying? She's like, hey, your oath to Nick? And, uh, Cell studies me, sees my twisting heart, releases me with a quiet sigh. Unspoken words hang heavy between us, but he lets them go until they dissipate in the air to wait for another day. She's like, yeah, I do need one. I do need a king's mage. Um. And then Arthur, Arthur's voice from within her says, we will face the shadows we always have. And Cell lifts an eyebrow, but says nothing at the mage flame that leaks from my skin. Why um, am I crying? Uh, if I concentrate, I can almost feel three heartbeats beneath my ribs. Different rhythms, different origins. All me. I shudder. Can we get out of here? His mouth quirks into a smile. And then they basically just go on a run together. Uh, and he swears to get Nick back for her. I'm so normal. I just literally flopped onto my bed. It's I'm not so good. Lying. I didn't even reread it. And I'm just like, oh, it's okay. This is the best book ever. Um, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just, um, also in case you were wondering, there is, at the end of the book with the author's note, is a whole section on grief and trauma, on, uh, Rootcraft, um, which is inspired from African American history and spiritual traditions, uh, and also the school's history. Um, and also King Arthur. And I quote, I'm going to just read the last sentence, uh, which is about King Arthur in this whole entire author's note, which is, to me, Arthur represents the seed of the canon of Western legend. Arthurian na, 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 is an opportunity for us to reorient ourselves to the stories we preserve and rediscover who gets to be the legendary. Which, I think she succeeded. I think she succeeded in that mission. Okay, I'm a simple bitch. Do I really want to watch the BBC Merlin again? Yes. Please don't. Please. I'm back with you. You know what I do? That's my whole personality for like a week and a half, and I will do nothing else except cry over that show. So that's a good idea. I should not do it. I'll just continue I, I watching Criminal Minds depressed. instead. I'm begging you not to be depressed at it. Don't forcibly make yourself depressed at it. Listen, I'm only saying, every time I watch it, I have a complete breakdown. I In my defense! I... In my defense! No. The end, when Arthur dies in Merlin's hands, or Merlin's arms, and throughout the whole entire series, it's this whole thing where Merlin's his servant, and he never says thank you or sorry. And he literally, it's his last words, he is dying in Merlin's arms. I'm not having tears in my eyes thinking about this and he says thank you and I'm sorry okay 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 okay, <laughs> okay I might get it a little bit but still <laughs> I thought you get it with that you know but also you have grade 8 early 2000s low budget dragon CGI which I as a bitch I am also, I'd like to note, the show ends, like, current time. Merlin is still alive. He's, like, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Like, thousands of years old. Um, he just looks like a 70-year-old guy just walking. And, um, you know, you know, there's, like, a prophecy that Arthur will come back when Elvin needs him most. And so, it cuts back to a current day with Merlin just walking the streets and basically looking like a homeless old guy. And you know where he's walking the streets? Right next to Elvin. He's just waiting for him. This whole time, just waiting for Arthur to come back. And I'm fine with it. Anyways, so fans I'm made a season say. six script uh, where basically Arthur does come back and it's Merlin dealing with the trauma of Arthur coming back and being alone this whole time and all this stuff. And I have read like half of it and I am highly obsessed with it. And the only reason I stopped it is because I knew it was taking over my whole entire personality. And I can't have a whole entire fan made version of a season of a TV show that ended. Almost 20 years ago, God. Um, that, what the like, fuck? most people have not read. I cannot make that my personality. I cannot do that to myself. 
anyways, um, I'm a 25 year old lady who loves this book, so, you know. The, oh my god, I, I knew it was the first, but I didn't realize it was the first. Your birthday's almost here, bestie. Yeah, I know, it's like three days in a row. It's almost here, how do you feel? Oh, I'm sorry. It's alright, I got Bestie's birthday present that I get to open on my birthday, so I'm excited for that. Yes, book me it good. I love it. The fish also loves it, rated it five stars. Of course I did. What else would I rate anything? I would like everyone to know when I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I think about is my the love of my life, Cell. <laughs> I would like to note he is on the cover for Flood March. I love. I have the special Barnes and Noble edition because I pre-ordered the Barnes and Noble edition to get the Barnes and Noble edition. We're not gonna talk about how Barnes and Noble fucked me over with that, um, with the pre-order and how it showed up a week and a half late because they literally made a whole entire loop around me. Uh but because of that one I have the bone chapter, but also uh, the cover is shiny. That's why I bought it because the bone chapter. Also, you could enter a giveaway if you bought it like that. And I was like, okay, I'll enter a giveaway. Um, I have a picture of Bella Dog with Bloodmarked when I finally got it. So, next episode, I will have that in the video format. I will have it at some point during the video format because it is important. Hear me out. What's more mentally ill? My first to last thought every day and every night being one of my OCs, or your first thought every day and every night. Like, you know what I'm saying. Uh, being so. Which which is more mentally ill. Um, I honestly don't know. I think I think the moral of the story is that we were meant to be friends if we're both like this. I agree. <laughs> we're both uh, fucked up. Congrats. Um, yes, tomorrow's my birthday when this goes out. Tomorrow? No, when this goes out, because this goes out the Friday before yeah. my birthday. Which is funny because there's. I was laughing because I was planning stuff for September, and the Friday before my birthday is when an episode goes up, and then the Friday be is like right before your birthday as well. We're both the Saturday. Let's see, I have a episode. question. Uh huh. People say for Fish Mom. Uh huh. What if we did a episode on Sleep Token Lore? I would kill myself. Wow. I see how it is. I'll play Civ 5 the whole time. That would make me cry, for real. I know, that's why I still do that to kill myself. Because I figured that was better for you than... Wow. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> if, if, if you do a Sleep No Coolor, right, I get to do something insane. Like, a deep dive into the homosexuality of the cooking. Or in just general, of Hannibal. Honestly, once I sit down and once you break me down enough before I actually watch Hannibal, Hannibal. it's gonna be so bad. It's gonna be so bad. I know. Because it's, it's gonna, gonna break you. It's gonna be yeah. I'm gonna try to do Merlin before that because I feel like Merlin will be a lower level of that. Because there's no cannibalism in Merlin. Um, I thought the good thing for the cannibalism, Bestie. Um, and then uh, and then we get to do Hannibal. Um, and then, and hear me out, we should watch some of my favorite horrible movies at some point for this podcast. Well? The Lost Pastor is a thing that exists. It's whatever. We're, uh, we're just here half the time. I know. Um, alright. Do you have anything else to say about this book? Uh, book good. Good book. Thank you. Uh, next episode will be fun marked. They're going to be back to back. Um, I don't, here's the thing, I don't know when Blood Oath, I think that's the name of the third one, is coming out, and it makes sense for, like, click-through rate and whatnot to make an episode as soon as that comes out, but there's a process of me getting my hands on it, reading it, the fish also reading it, both of us having mental breakdowns over it, us taking notes on it, so, I don't know when that's coming out. Um, it will be I'm an at episode least at some point. If you think I'm not going to talk about, about it for over an hour, you are very fucking wrong. This is my whole personality, is this series. I have issues. <laughs> Can you tell? Yeah. Um, 
Um, yeah. And so, that's it. Okay. Um, that's the next one. Uh, after that is Unbroken, the episode that was supposed to go up last week. Uh, that is the end of a trilogy. I have thoughts and opinions about it. Uh, and then uh, you get two more of the Touch of Taboo series by Katie Robert. Or as I like to call it, the Porn with the No Plot series. I hilariously saw a Instagram video that was like, these are the pithiest books ever. You should totally not read them. So save them for later, right? And on the list was Get In My Swamp, the Shrek Smut. Oh my god. And Your Dad Will Do. I mean... And I was there just like, mm, you should read Jenica Snow. No, fuck. Do you ever just remember Jenica Snow exists? Because I do. No. I completely <sighs> blocked that out. Oh, I wish I could block out the scene where they, she has sex with three bears with honey. <sighs> it's so ingrained in my brain. I'm so glad I didn't read that. The Beast was enough. Tr- trust me. Beast was so tame in comparison. The Beast was fine. The Beast was normal. Imagine thinking the Beast is normal. Anyways. Uh, that's the end of this episode. Do you have any final thoughts? Uh-huh. No. Thank you. I love it when you do that. I love how that's just how we end this. Nobody gets this far but me. 